it's every element of hip hop. It was, it was, it was, it was fifty-fifty, bro. If you look at the pictures, just go see the pictures. Mm -hmm. You'll see it. I mean, there's still a good bunch mm -hmm. still riding off of the culture and still here and still present. But why do you think it is not? There's not more there now. There's more. The problem is now we're talking about another subject. The subject is called colorism. 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 So Fat Joe's the white Puerto Rican with green eyes, but you got Carmelo Anthony, you got Jim Jones, you got Fabulous, you got Lloyd Banks, you got Pop Smoke. Let's get into it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pose you the question, is there racism in the Latinx community? If so, how and why? Okay, whoa, okay, lots of questions. So yes, there is definitely racism in the Latinx community, but I think you're quick to find a bunch of for every person that says yes, like me, you'll have like a uh, hundred others that say no. It's 50 50, bro. That's irrefutably a lie, but you know, whatever. Colorism. So Fat Joe's the white Puerto Rican with green eyes, but you got Carmelo Anthony, you got Jim Jones, you got Fabulous, you got Lloyd Banks, you got Pop Smoke. Colorism. It sounds like Fat Joe is alleging that black Americans are the ones separating the Latino community, that somehow, because there are black Latinos that black Americans embrace, that he should be regarded and viewed as the same because they are both Latino. But what does the Latino community have to say? Another thing that you might hear is, uh, todos somos, um, you know, it's or whatever nationality. Like, todos somos venezolanos, todos somos cubanos, todos somos whatever. But at the end of the day, that whole emphasis on placing national identity before race really does attempt to erase the racial struggles um, that people face. And it also kind of uh, plays into that whole idea that Latin X or um, Hispanic in itself is a race, because that's what we were taught in our home countries. We were taught like, oh no, you're Cuban before you're, uh, you know, black or whatever. Don't try to divide the country. Don't try to uh, divide us. Like, todos somos unidos, like, don't, like you mentioning something about race is trying to create controversy and trying to uh, split us up. It's the case because that's what our doctrines have been. Like Simon Bolivar taught that, that national identity should be emphasized before uh, race because if not, then uh, if race was ever talked about too much, then it would create division and it would split people up. Uh, same thing, Jose Marti said the same thing. Um, so many different uh, philosophies. But like, do you feel thing. like when you when you hear something like this, where there's like this like sense of like, oh, we are one regardless of the color of our skin. Mm -hmm. Why is that problematic? I think it has noble intentions, of course. Like, oh yeah, right. we're all one. We're all a human race. Like, yeah, that's beautiful, sure. But if um, someone bringing up their grievances and pointing out differences in treatment of people with different colors is um threatening to you then maybe you have to check yourself and be like wait why am i threatened by them speaking about about, about something that is hurting them so apparently latino is not a race and according to the latinos on this panel nationality is often pushed by the white latinos at the top as a means of silencing the racial disparities that the black people in these countries decry because if everybody's puerto rican then there's no such thing as colorism and to point it out is to be divisive Fat Joe describes himself as a white Latino with green eyes, but then acts brand new when the subject of race within the Latino community arises. His own culture doesn't even view each other as being the same, nor does the Latino community at large. An interesting moment during this interview that I'd like to highlight. Angela Martinez describes what it was like when she exited the New York bubble and was exposed to the black community at large. We didn't we know none of that. Living. I, didn't, I never realized there was a difference till I started when I got in the game and then I would travel, travel and I would go to different like, cities and yeah. people would look at me like, what are you doing here? I'd be like, what do you mean what am I doing yeah, here? I, I, belong, I belong here. Yeah. What are you talking about? But I, then I realized, oh, there's a cultural difference. So not only does it show whose culture it actually was that you were participating in, evident in the fact that there were no white Latinos around, but also in just how myopic and uneducated a lot of white Latinos from New York were pertaining to black culture outside of the Bronx bubble. In comparison to the blacks in New York that seemed to display a cultural awareness no matter where they went in black society. 
But because you found yourself living among black people in New York and picked up on some of their lingo, you now go around on a national stage in America as a white Latino and shout out the N-word. Not even blacks or the so-called black Latinos would be so insensitive and callous and careless to call the white Latinos the names that are set aside for them with reckless abandon. Latinos do not view each other as the same, never have. And though many of the white Latinos refuse to admit to the notion of racial discrimination and the idea of black Latinos being different, as we heard in the testimony of the panelists, so-called black Latinos have always known that they were different because they have always been treated differently, as we can observe in the historical records, such as the events that led to the Cuban massacre of 1912, where thousands of black Cubans were slaughtered by the white Cuban army which caused them to form their own army and fight back. And even in America, outside of your little bubble, there are Latinos that let it all hang out. Sign well, We don't want to sign to no blacks. Right. Southsiders do want, guess, I don't want to speak on that, but we don't want to sign to no blacks. You know what I'm saying? Is that because of the prison shit? It's not a racist thing? It, it's Help me understand, because when you say that out loud, it, it sounds crazy. It's because like this. It's like this. It's like, I go to jail, I rock with my race. Mm -hmm. I eat with my race. I do things with my race. So it's like, I'm, a, I'm a here, I'm here, I conduct business, I do things with my race. You know, like, I, I'm, we integrate and whatnot, but why would I have somebody in charge of my music career if, if I'm already programmed a certain way i'm already institutionalized a certain way why would i you get what i'm saying that's just my mindset so i'm like no nah, we wouldn't do that and and most of the homies would think the same way as so me. they're gonna agree with what i say so, so how convenient is it to sit back and project the idea of reverse colorism onto black americans for viewing black latinos as being black and therefore privy to black society and culture and viewing white latinos as being guests and not privy to pedestals in black society when your own culture vehemently differentiates between the two. You mentioned Jim Jones as being Latino, as if you're upset that he gets more of a pass in black society than you, but then you say that is due to colorism. Well, not sure if you saw just how light-skinned Jim Jones is, so that debunks the notion of colorism, which is to show preference to a particular skin tone within a particular group. So that debunks the idea of light skin discrimination, so you're only left with the race card. And that's a conversation you probably don't want to have. Oh, you, you have to be with a white, with a white guy because you have to perfect the race. Oh, your hair, like, que pelo malo. Ay, pa ser una negra eres bastante linda. Oye, pero que negra fina. That's what it's like. As an Afro-Latino, I've experienced all forms of racism. I've experienced racism that is very covert and passive. Cuando uno va a solicitar trabajo, una de las cosas que terminan es el pelo. Te dicen que te tienes que peinar, pero ahora mismo yo estoy peinada. I've also experienced direct racism, been called racial slurs. I've been told. Why do I live in a certain neighborhood? Cuando te dicen, ¿verdad? Que eres feo por no tener unas características semejantes a las características europeas. Yeah, and, and we see lot of, lots of different examples of this. Like, uh, there's the same racist character, caricatures that exist in the U.S. Uh, of like comparing black people to monkeys that exist in Latin America as well. Yeah, um, yes, yeah. But I think it does stem from wider narratives that we see of like, you know, that black people aren't considered beautiful, that there's still these crazy ethno, ethno um, European standards for um, yeah. beauty in the Latin X community. Like, Nuestra Belleza Latina is always like um, Puerto Rican or Cuban, like very light skin. Or, 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 or not even just like those two countries, but even just any country in Latin America that they choose a, a, a light skin person. So yeah, always. They've had like, They've, yeah, they've had like women from other countries as well, not just like from Puerto Rico. Sad, but it's the truth. I've heard it many, many times. Um, and we are treated differently. A lot of Latinos don't want my kind mixed into their family because they didn't want to better the race. And better the race means more European features. Colorism. 
dark-skinned Haitians who are technically Latino were expelled from the Dominican Republic by the tens of thousands. So what is Latino that it is being sold as a metric by which people are bound? No different than if I were to say we are bound by being left-handed. If it seems that black society here in America differentiates between that which is black and that which is Latino, not really. Where if you actually were to listen to the plight of the Afro-Latino in nearly every country, it is the culture that defines it for them. The colorism is embedded in the so-called Latino culture, and the Afro-Latino has been accepted by the black American in a way that they have not been accepted in their own country. The white Puerto Ricans have been accepted as well. But the colorism? No, that's in your community. Fight for Haiti the way that you fight to be recognized for hip hop. Fight for the Afro Latino in Puerto Rico that feels marginalized by the white Latinos that you identify yourself as. These are the cries of colorism. We have danced together and we have rapped together but we are still separated. We cannot be brothers or sisters or a community when it is time to either party or support an arbitrary struggle. No, it has to be done by the code. That's what binds us. That's what makes us a community in every way. No matter who you are or where you are, that makes us family.